This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Energy Secrets, we're going to be talking about eyes, specifically cataracts, the signs, the causes, and some of the natural solutions. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Jones. For those of you who are new, welcome. In this edition, we're going to be discussing an eye condition called cataracts. And I have my buddy with me here. This is Lewis. Say hi, Lewis. Lewis really isn't fond of a camera. But I'm just going to cloak close up. I'm going to zoom the camera in on him on his eye. So first of all, you can get an understanding of what a cataract is. You need to have an understanding of the basic eye anatomy. Uh, a little bit of discussion around some of the causes of cataracts. Uh, and then we're going to just discuss some of the solutions, some of the conventional ones, as well as some of your natural options. So what is a cataract? A cataract is a whitening of a specific structure called the lens, which sits in about in the center of your dog or your cat's eye. And, and the lens, we also have lenses obviously as part of our same eye anatomy. The, ends, the lens is there to focus the light, so it's taking the light that you're, that's coming through to you, um, reflects off the cornea, goes in through the lens, and then it focuses that light on the back of the eye, the retina, and that's how we make sense of things, how we're able to see things, as our, our dogs and our cats. Um, so let's just have a look here. I'm going to show you some anatomy uh, close up here so you can see it. So I think as you can see on, on that picture that I've got, so it's this picture right here, the very outside surface, that thing is called the cornea. That's the very outside part of the eye. It's right there. Uh, then there's two sort of black lines, one here, one below there. Those are the muscles that make up the pupil. That's what concentrates the light. So you see your pupil dilating in low light. It gets constricted, it gets small during when there's lots of light. And then there's right, the structure right behind that, it's called the lens. So you just think of the lens as kind of like, you know, the, the lens clap, cap on top of your glasses. You know, that, that lens, and that's what it is. It's there focusing that light, and it focuses it on the very back of the eye. That, and this here is called the retina. So you guys, I'm just going to zoom the camera in on Lewis's eye so you can have a better appreciation of his eye, eye anatomy, where that lens is, and then we'll actually specifically discuss the cataracts. So there's Lewis looking at you. So I'm just going to hold his eye open here and just explain different parts. So the very surface, the very top part here, my finger's just touching, that's called the cornea. Um, right into the center, uh, you just got his third eyelid popping in and out. So right in the center, and where it's constricting slightly when I close it, it gets bigger, when I open it, it gets smaller. That's the pupil, the two muscles that sort of help that pupil dilate and constrict. That's called the iris. And just in behind that, and I don't know if you're able to see or not, it's a little bit whiter. So right in there, it's a slightly whitish. So he actually has a condition called senile cataracts. And the area just here around the eye, that's called the sclera. That's the white tissue. And just underneath, so above and below, that pink tissue that I pulled down there, that's called the conjunctiva. That's what you'll see inflamed pretty commonly during an eye infection. That's what we, we'll call it conjunctivitis. So cataracts themselves, they can be congenital, meaning some dogs are born with them. They can be age-related or senile cataracts, you know, such as Lewis here, just normal part of the aging changes. And a certain amount of fluid is eventually drawn into that lens as it starts to wear down, um, leading to that increased opacity or whitening. Um, there can be genetic correlation, so a number of dogs can be predisposed to those. That's, what you, that's how you can see it. Um, you can see it with trauma, for instance, you know, sudden blow or shock, a car accident, for instance, can then damage the lens, um, leading it to take on inflammatory cells and fluid, turning it white. Um, it can be related to diet. There's an actually specific thing um, where kittens that have been fed exclusively kitten milk replacer lack some of the key nutrients uh, for normal development, and that can actually lead to cataracts. I wanted to specifically talk about diabetes in particular. So what can happen? So first of all with dogs is we'll have these dogs that are diabetic. They have increased amounts of blood sugar. They also have the sugar in other areas. So they have increased amounts of blood glucose or sugar within the eye or that chamber is within the eye. Some of that glucose can then be absorbed into the lens of the eye itself. 
and that gets turned into another type of sugar called, called sorbitol, which then causes fluid to be absorbed into the lens, turning it that opaque sort of white color, turning it into a cataract. Fortunately, the metabolism is very different for our cats, so they metabolize the sugar, alter, metabolize the sugar differently, and we don't actually see uh, diabetic-induced uh, cataracts in our cats. So you guys, so what should you do if you suspect uh, that your pet has a cataract? So the first thing would be, you know, get your dog or your cat examined, and period, especially if you see it in a sudden onset, or especially if it's accompanied by the clinical signs seen in diabetes, you know, increased drinking, increased urination. We want to figure out, you know, what is the underlying cause. It may be that your dog has gotten older, such as Lewis, and there's just sort of normal aging changes, um, where I would see clients and I would call them senile cataracts. Just normal um, aging change of the lens, it's taking on a certain amount of fluid and inflammatory cells, and it's turned that white opaque color. It's okay. For a majority of dogs that have these sort of senile cataracts, one, one, it's something to take note of, but two, for the most cases, you don't need to do anything in particular. Most of these guys can still see, as Lewis can still see. I see that he can't see as well at night, so his night vision isn't as good. Well, first, if your dog has, you know, an advanced cataract, they've gone completely blind, um, in all honesty, there isn't anything one natural supplement that's gonna deal with that. I mean, in that case, um, you're going to need to con consider some form of conventional veterinary treatment, and that would be surgery. Be going to see a veterinary ophthalmologist. They may be able to do a procedure called phaeoemulsification, where they break it down and then actually replace that lens with a normal functioning one. And that would be ideal. Then your dog's able to visually see again. Um, if you've got an underlying cause, such as diabetes, that's going to need to be then adequately controlled. But then let's just say if your dog is much like Lewis, where it's sort of these senile, you know, age-related onset cataracts, what should you do then? Well, my first big suggestion is just get your dog on a quality, sort of complete uh, dog supplement, one that includes a variety of different antioxidants, you know, things such as zinc, such as vitamin E, such as vitamin C. Uh, something that can actually help decrease some of the oxidative stress on that eye amongst all the other organs. That's just what happens with normal aging, wear and tear. Um, and that may help decrease the rate of, you know, the aging of that lens and decrease the rate of that cataract forming. Um, so as I said, there's one is my supplement, Ultimate Canine Health Formula. The next thing I wanted to discuss was the use of fish oil. Uh, there was one study I read which showed that people that consumed fish, you know, more than three times a week, lowered their risk of cataract formation by over 10%. Um, most likely it was the fish oil was being a primary benefit. Um, so here is you know, a fish oil supplement. So it, it's one that you could also consider, especially if you've got a dog that's genetically predisposed to cataracts or you know, there is a potential hereditary link. So then you'd be looking at some form of fish oil supplement. Likewise, I'd be looking at higher end of the dose, upwards of 1,000 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Third, there's a veterinary supplement called OcuGlow RX. So it's a specific um, veterinary eye supplement that includes 12 different antioxidants. So for instance, you know, such as lutein, green tea, lycopene, um, a number of these different specific antioxidants that are believed to be very beneficial for eye health. Uh, will it reverse the signs of a mature cataract? Probably not, but may it help delay the progression of cataracts? Is it also just specifically beneficial for eye health? Yes, it is. Uh, and that specific supplement is called OcuGlow RX. A couple other things I wanted to mention. First, there's a herb called Sinair Area. Um, this is a tincture. And it has been discussed as one of the potential natural remedies uh, for treating our dogs with cataracts. First, to use the herbal tincture, uh, the thought is one, take, you know, First, you want to have the glycerin base, not the alcohol base, as far as the tincture. And, and then you want to take the bottle of tincture. and So take that bottle, mix that 50-50 uh, with sterile saline, which you can purchase at all, any of the pharmacies. And then you'd be dosing it at one drop twice daily to the affected eye, dosing it for 30 days um, and seeing if it has been beneficial in any way. There's one Chinese herbal remedy I want to discuss. It's called Jua Hua. J-U-A-H-U-A. Uh, in part, it's got part of the, the plant chrysanthemum in it. 
Um, and it's one of the remedies that is used in Chinese medicine to help treat cataracts. Um, so you're looking at a dose of about a quarter of a teaspoon for 10 pounds of body weight daily. And then the last thing I want to discuss is the use of a homeopathic. Uh, so once again, it's based on the similar herb that I discussed. It's in our area, uh, but it's this as the homeopathic tablet as opposed to the actual herbal tincture. Uh, so once again, you're looking at the 30C dose, which is pretty typical, the most common concentration. And you'd be doing sort of one tablet twice daily um, for 20 pounds of body weight. So something like Lewis, um, you would be getting three or four of these twice daily. I'd be treating him once again for a month, assessing if there's any response or not after that period of time. Thank you guys for watching this edition of Energy Secrets about cataracts. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to subscribe by clicking that link in the box above. Then you can go ahead, click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.